with the defeat of the portugal colonial powers by the dutch colonial powers in 1663 life in kochi was soon back to normal it was sufficient for the gsbs to return back to kochi from udem peru with the deity of tirumala devar to start life all over again the business friendly dutch colonial powers gave top priority for law and order issues resulting in conducive atmosphere for resumption of trading and business activities the kochi port trust showed rapid growth in its cargo handling the commercial development spilled over to the economic development of the residents also the belief that the deity of tirumala devar brings prosperity to the place where it is consecrated again proved right in the case of kochi and the gsb samaj in 1799 the gsb samaj constructed a small but well built temple for the deity of tirumala devar where now stands the vrindavan of swami sukratendra teertha of kashimar samsthan the deity of tirumala devar was consecrated for the second time in 17 19 80 in that new temple the smooth run the gsbs of kochi had since 1663 continued for many years till 1790 when a strong willed ruler called shaktandamburan took charge of the kingdom of kochi the king was looking for quick fixes in revenue collections to stabilize its treasury that was in bad shape following an attack on trishur the northern part of his kingdom by hyder ali of mysore in 1776 Shaktan Tamburan demanded a share of their wealth from the merchants of Kochi. The king also demanded a part of the Tirumala Devar temple's wealth. While the GSB Kochi merchants partly complied with the demands, the temple administration refused to part with the temple wealth. Greatly annoyed, the king ordered for beheading the top GSB merchant Devareshakini. imprisonment of the temple administrators and confiscation of his properties hearing about the murder of sri devareshakini the temple administrators anticipating the worst of an attack by the king decided to ship the deity of tirumala devar out of the kochi kingdom that night itself in 1792 removing the deity with some ornaments They reached the British Kochi, the present day Fort Kochi and stayed overnight in one of the buildings there. With that move, the jinx of instability of Tirumala Devar continued for the fourth time. But this time the gap was the longest, 129 years. The army of Shaktan Tamburan soon landed up in Kochi Tirumala temple and indulged in looting and arson. They took away whatever they they could lay their hands on including the huge costly brass and bronze vessels used for cooking etc even today one could see in that royal temple in tripunathura those huge vessels that have the ingrained metallic seal of kochi tirumala devaswam in the meanwhile the gsb group with the deity of Kochi Tirumala Devar and a few ornaments that stayed in the British Kochi overnight left by sea route for Thurabur village some 30 kilometers away in the south that village already had around 300 GSB families meeting the village elders they disclosed the reasons behind their sudden arrival realizing the seriousness of the situation the GSBs of Thurabur village quickly made arrangements for the comfortable stay of the Kochi GSB members. They also made necessary arrangements in their own family temple for the regular worship of the deity of Tirumala Devar. There the migrants from Kochi spent a couple of years worshipping their deity. 
observing their devotion to god and sincerity in action sri revalu naikan one large hearted gsb in that village donated huge tract of land for construction of a permanent temple for tirumala devar in thuravur village many years later some basic but glaring mistakes in the transfer of the title deed that land became the cause for prolonged legal battle between administrators of the temples of kochi and thuravur which the kochi tirumala devasam authorities finally lost in the year 1893 in the madras high court on hearing about the attempts made by the king of kochi to get back the deity the kochi devotees thought that thuravur was not a safe place for the deity and they started looking for an alternative place in alapi village some 35 km south of thuravur in 1795 they reached alapi village and constructed a small temple in a place that was less frequented by the locals also being full of reptiles that place thus offered a perfect place for seclusion from the prying eyes of the king of kochi not many even in the alapi village also had any idea of that village temple even as the kochi devotees continued to visit the temple at regular intervals for darshan of their deity the place where the deity of tirumala devar was kept and worshiped in alappi village now stand the temple known as old tirumala temple as the years rolled the sleepy alappi village soon got changed into a bustling port with the arrival of foreign ships for import and export of commodities The king of Travancore took notice of the changes in the economic fortunes of a sleepy village in his kingdom. After a thorough inquiry, the king found out that the deity of Tirumala Devar, secretly worshipped in that village, was the sole reason behind it. He also came to know that the atrocities of the king of Kochi was the reason for shifting the deity from Kochi to Alappi. The devout king was keen to ensure full time protection to the deity. He immediately ordered for allotment of a big plot inside the town and construction of a permanent temple there. As soon as the temple construction was over, he requested the Kochi devotees to shift the deity of Kochi Tirumala Devar to the new temple in a place that is now called Ananta Narayanapuram. and known by the name new tirumala temple thus the deity of tirumala devar was consecrated in the newly built temple in 1852 ad in the month of may in that the deity again kept its tryst with the jinks of unsettlement after every 60 years for the fifth time since 1472 the king also posted special sentries to the temple for his safety In the meanwhile the Kochi devotees were keeping a close watch on the movements of the deity from Thuravur village to Alappi seeing that the deity was consecrated in the new temple constructed at the instance of the king of Travancore and given full protection round the clock they were naturally crestfallen they were resigned to the fate of losing the deity of Tirumala Devar for good to lift their morale the leaders of the jsb samaj came out with new strategies and suggested for mass upasanas like upavasas samuhi prarthanas samuhi bhajans visiting alappi temple for darshan in groups at regular intervals etc as the days rolled their upasana created an intense positive feelings in them that tirumala devar deity would soon be back in kochi buoyed by that new positive feelings in the samaj sarva sri venkateshwara shanai janardan shanai and sri rs harishanai firmly in charge of the social leadership decided to make preparations of a master plan for construction of a grand temple at kochi 
they were unanimous that it should be done with the active involvement of the whole community that exercise took months to complete underlying the significance the community attached to the project the community was unanimous that the construction of the temple should be as per the principles of agama shastra the enzyme temple architecture finally they see road on the purna prasad model they also decided that the construction should be prioritized and completed only in three phases so that at no time the work should stop because of fund crunch the three phases planned were phase 1 construction of the sri kovil and the inner prakaras phase 2 upakovils outer prakaras agrashalas phase 3 shiveli pandal four gropurams two kulamandapams one each for rathotsavam and mahotsavam when finalized the master plan clearly had the stamp of sri rs harishanai's personality the greatest visionary leader the jsb kochi samaj was blessed to have so far the shilanyas for the grand temple was laid on 1852 It may not be a mere coincidence that it was the same year far away in Alappu town the Kochi Tirumala deity was consecrated in the newly constructed temple